The House and Fate to Morgana is a gothic horror romance visual novel that was released in 2016 on PC, mobile, Nintendo DS, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation Vita. It's a name I've heard a lot about, but didn't know anything story-wise. You play as an unknown person, an amnesiac who has lost their own memories. You wake up in a mysterious dark mansion to a maid who seems to know you and wants to help restore your memories. The first half of the game shows you stories slash memories that she narrates, all people involved being connected to the mansion. The second half reveals your true identity and restores your memories, then goes on to give more backstory to everyone and finding a solution. The story is extremely complicated and twisted. Just when you think you know what's going on, a revelation occurs that changes everything you've seen. I won't lie, it did get exhausting after a while to constantly be like, well, here comes another plot twist and long backstory to explain it. The stories were all very interesting, but the amount of how many plot twists there were wore me out. I don't know if much would have been better cut out though, if at all, because everything tied together and painted a very colorful picture of the world and characters. It's hard to explain. The characters were pretty realistic. There was no black and white, everyone was morally gray, like... normal people? No one had truly clean hands. There was one character I didn't have any sympathy for. If you've played the game, you probably know who it is. I hope they redeem themselves in the sequel, but I don't feel bad for their past. Despite taking place in the early 1000s, most of the characters spoke informally like they were part of our present time. For example, someone in 1099 saying they're pumped about doing something and clout was also used. Maybe it was to connect better to the audience? It just felt very out of place for me. The artwork for the characters were nicely drawn. It was a kind of realistic style that had some characters looking like porcelain dolls. Very pretty. It creeped me out a bit at first, but I usually have that experience with visual novels of different art styles than just anime. The backgrounds were very abstract, not much going on there. What brought the story to life though was the music. Everything, save for some sound effects, was completely original and fit whatever scene it was in perfectly. There was a lot of love put into the music and art, and they go hand in hand, giving you a rich experience. For the most part, the story is dark and mysterious, with some light moments. There were some comedic aspects that felt out of place, like they would fit better in a romance comedy or something. As it goes, there are multiple endings and dead ends you can achieve. Some of the dialogue choices are timed, so I ended up getting a kind of bad ending the first time when I didn't realize that. The true ending ties everything together, and if you get that first or early on, I don't really see a point to unlocking the other endings except for achievements and completion. It has a warning that it's a dark and disturbing game with grotesque scenes, and yeah. You have depictions of injuries or attacks done to people. No visuals for the most part, just text, but it is descriptive enough to make you cringe. It makes sure you know exactly what kind of pain these characters are feeling. The story also covers a lot of taboo subjects, not necessarily in a good light, just acknowledging that it's a part of human nature. I didn't really care because I know people can be horrible. Talking slash writing about it or reading about it doesn't mean you support it though. These subjects include incest, rape, pedophilia, torture, body dysphoria. Again, they're not glorified, just brought up to show what darkness lies in some people. If you think it might bother you, then do not play it. It was kind of what I was expecting it to be, but also not. Like I said earlier, I didn't really know anything about the story, just scary dark mansion, no memories creepy made that looks like porcelain. Is this death mark? I would compare it to Popotan and Angel Beats though. How do they compare? I guess you'll have to find out. This was a very interesting game and there was a ton of story and content packed into it. Most people say they take around 50 hours to complete it. I took 28 hours to get 100% completion, but I'm also a fast reader. So it will be something that will occupy a lot of your time. It might be best to not just go through the entire thing at once like I did, just in case you also get burned out on the plot twists. Maybe do like one chapter a day or something? 
It's worth at least another playthrough to pick up on details you didn't notice before, and clearing the game with the true ending unlocks an extra side story. It's mostly out of character and has everyone breaking the fourth wall talking about the game's development. It was a chapter all on its own. If you like dark, gothic, horror, romance, tragedies, anything to make you feel sad, you will love this. Do you want to hate humanity? Playhouse and Fata Morgana! No, but seriously, don't go into it lightly and then complain that it's too distressing. This is your final warning. Thank you for watching the video. Leave a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more content. Comment your opinions on this game. Thank you to my patrons on Patreon. You guys mean so much to me. I'm glad to have people supporting me. I also have new merch. Newer new merch for my um, membership service, whatever, on Patreon and on Redbubble. It has art done by my friend Lonnie. And yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> Thank you for watching.